So what I essentially did over the weekend is just set up few endpoints for hitting NetSuite environment. One is authentication endpoint, safe search endpoint, and customer endpoint. Behind each of endpoint, there can be many requests, right? So it's uh, some parameters. But before that to work, essentially, we need to set up some things into your accounts. What I did, basically, I created this integration record. The integration record is here. Also, I set, uh, I saved these credential tokens for this. Later, I created one role. So it's good practice to have a separate role for accessing NetSuite environment over the RESTlet. So this is uh, just BRI REST integration, and this role that have very limited permission right now. So just on customers, uh, full permission, nothing else. Also for this role to work correctly, basically to use this role as a token authentication or to role, you have to have this uh, permission enabled. So login using access token. After that, it's the uh, only thing left is to create this authentication token. So access token is here for this one. For this role, I assigned that uh, this uh, role for this user. This user does have other roles, but this one is just for accessing the, this RESTlet. So basically that's basic setup for RESTlet Ford. And then I developed this three RESTlets. This is basically project in, in this particular environment. And it's good that this project is, does have already set up this as a SDF project. So when you program, you already have those all artifacts uh, you can pull from the account and from the project into account. So it's easy to create everything from one place. This is authentication endpoint. Very simple RESTlet. It depends on TweetScript 2.0. Oh, so a very basic endpoint. We expose GET request and we just print user information based on the credentials that request came into NetSuite, right? So we can exercise this guy. This is the authentication endpoint. In the NetSuite, I deployed this RESTlet. So I got this external URL. That's basically all we need to access this endpoint. And when we hit this endpoint, we got some basic information about users who basically made requests with this uh, token. So it's a username, password, location, department, uh, which role it used to access this environment. This is not a, a classical login thing or to preserve states or something like that. It's just that you prove that your token is okay and that you can access that endpoint. We like to call that hello world, just to make sure that we can connect, right? It's like the real basics before we go into real logic. Yeah, exactly. One important point here, we are using token-based authentication, as I said, and this is set up here on this Postman tool is quite handy if you are doing RESTlet development. So based on this of collection, I set up that OAuth 1.0 because this is the standard supported by NetSuite. All credentials for this is driven by this environment setup. Those are credentials for accessing NetSuite account. You created so, those variables, CKCS and so forth. Yeah, so this is your... customer, customer key, customer secret, access token ID and token secret and realm account identifier. If we look at this, if I saw this guy here, you just reference those guys here, you know, in this authorization header and it will be automatically pulled. So it's quite handy if you have multiple accounts so you can just switch in which account you are working with. Then the second one is a safe search endpoint. Well, my practice is to do this uh, RESTlet folder and RESTlet itself uh, does not contain any, any basically logic, right? It's just a skeleton around the APIs or some heavyweight logic. This is only get request. This, this to get method is safe search get is very simple just check some some basic requirements on the payload and then create calling api and you know create actual logic more wrapper around the safe search capacity around basically the safe search module right so it's easier to reference safe search from the netsuite and expose the data to you know over the restlet and it also does have some capacity for exercising paging and which page you want to hit and how large you, your page you want to be, right? I, I can show you that. I created one small search. This is the safe search test. And this is the, those three parameters are basically from the NetSuite. Those last three are from the logic trail. This type data, page size 10 and page, we are hitting page one. The trick with this is what we've done is we define some of the parameters that we say you can drive into it so you can get some control over it. Now, what you get, this is some 
basic search I created in the Sandbox account. This is just plain customer search. What I requested here is page one, a page size is 10, and I got 10, 10. If I want page size, let's say 50, I'll again get page one, but it will be 50, 50 records there. We can access metadata. Meta. That provides us with some metadata about this uh, search results. So we have here how many records are there. And we have also those page ranges. So index one, you know, uh, it's something like in NetSuite, but you doing in UI, uh, safe search, you will get this combo box. Little, uh, little navigator, right? To help, help yeah, understand how so, you went page through it. Yeah, so it, this can be exposed and on some web page and you can do the same navigation like in, in NetSuite. So, there is all those index down there. Is also, I think, records about what columns are exposed. So page size, definition. And I will switch to the next one, the customer. So customer API is basic logic here. It's, as I said, REST itself is just uh, very simple and just calling this API down there. Its main logic is here. So first one for get, get request is we can get customer and exposed full record as is from the net and you will get one pretty big one. Basically what we get, this is a separate endpoint and you can now provide some parameters. Internal ID, if you provide internal ID on this get endpoint, you will get just that one record, right? From that customer. And as you see, it's a really huge one, right? So probably you will not need everything. So I think maybe it's good practice to shape it a little bit and just to expose some data you really want to. So it also exposed some sublists, also this address book. And, what we're do and, and the basic pattern, guys, that we have here is, is that on this object, NetSuite presents the customer object to us in a particular way. So you kind of start with the way NetSuite provides it because that's how we're seeing it at the API level and we're just exposing that. Then the question really is, is well, that might be just too robust, so you might pare it down or possibly add a little things extra to it and so forth. You can mm -hmm. shape it according to what your endpoint requirements are. But the pattern allows you to rapidly at least kind of get the data out, right? And begin to mm -hmm. understand it. The next one is, uh, this is by internal ID, so it exposes full record, right? So this one leverage this search capacity already tackled. It's the same API customer. Uh, if uh, this internal ID parameter is not present, it will do a filtering uh, over this uh, safe search. So we can, that's something you can shape a little bit here. This is loading the safe search. You specify page size and page, and then you are able to do uh, this paging stuff I already show you. You can leverage filters from the safe search. You can craft very complex safe search in NetSuite. And then you can, from the filtering perspective, from the get perspective, you can just add some other filters, right? So you can add this to filter from your client perspective. And this is just some candidate. You can expose a metadata also on this search, which is nice when you are developing. So you actually, I think you can see what is metadata of your request uh, filters and uh, columns. We will probably, if I remove this, we will probably hit a limitation about yeah, no more than 4,000 search results. And now we can do size, let's say 100 and page equal one. And you will get, you know, your result. You can easily switch to this paging over just adding those parameters in the URL. So I think what's, uh, what's powerful about this is, is the endpoint. The endpoint's not only working individually to look up various records, it's got a list capacity, right? Similar to what generic mm -hmm. search would do, right? But it's, you're shaping it for what the, you need for that endpoint relative to that business topic, you could say. Yeah, and now basically let's get, you know, just for getting, you can leverage one safe search. You can, you know, you can program whatever you want in this environment because you are at the level of with script and customization and at the, to say the lowest level, right? So you can leverage this search or you can provide some parameters in the get request and hit some other search. You can expose in the filters whatever you like or forbid if you have some requirements to be more restrictive, not to allow something to search or something like that. I will switch to these other types of requests 
basically that's all in this one module, right? Uh, API file. So I will try to create one customer. There are some support we can do to create maybe prospect. It's a little bit tricky because all those types of customers are basically maybe just one attribute at the record level. But when you are working with SwiftScript, you have to specify as a record type so to create. So, so I have this logic to, to create a different type of customers, right? Maybe you, your requirements will not be like that, but that's how we did it here. I will create one simple with this post request. And one convention I'm using here to somehow easy development because there's a lot of attributes on one side. Each attribute does have its name in the NetSuite, but I'm using the same names for payloads. So this person is original record name in the NetSuite, first name, last name, email. When when I am when inserting record, it's basically just going over this loop and just fill name and then trying to set that exact value. So basically, this is just convention, right? You can develop some different approach, maybe some different naming convention, and then do some mapping between your payload and actual uh, record names in NetSuite. I will create this test guy. I will try to do uh, here this one and one. Else. So you can see we're returning back success false, giving you the exception so that you could diagnose yeah. what's happening on the other yeah. side, right? This is that. This is generic wrapper for results. So if it is always handle this this exception and wrap this one record and say okay, it's success is false and this exception code and message, so you can handle that. Okay, it, it created this guy, and it as a result it uh, returns this record, full record, so full representation of the record. This guy now we can basically try to retrieve this with an email. I'm not sure if okay. Of course, all of that gets into you guys' key design, right? Are you going to work on internal IDs, email addresses, various other kinds of things for whatever you're going to be doing for your key passing? Yeah. Very simple one to search. Now, for updates, it's just as simple as specify this ID of that record in the update and let's say that's it's will move to oh sorry yeah. again we found that we're the most rapid if we use netsuite's names we're not then producing cross-referencing and so forth right but of course it all can be shaped by you yeah now probably these guys also there so I'm just Come on. Okay, it's change. And now we are also able to, to delete the guy, right? Uh, okay, customer ID. We can specify this as a parameter in the request itself. We deleted the guy, so. So now if you try and do a query on it, right? Yeah, probably... I think query on this uh, same one, right? So... Yeah, probably won't find it, right? Yeah, no, no, nothing again. Nothing again. You can exercise some logic, you know, about these customers purely to say rest way over this lightweight interface. Right. So, Actually, I think uh, you did. I think you did a great job there, Borko, in mm -hmm. showing the range of everything for the proof of concept to help the guys understand. Let's give them a chance to ask some questions and see see where mm -hmm. they want to go. I hope this guy. I hope this met what you were doing. You did a good job on scope. Absolutely, Marty. I think this was fantastic. Uh, thank you, Borko.